Okay, so in our last class, we were looking at uh, how to determine the JMA access crossing, and that is in uh, refining the sketch for uh, root lockers. So once you've done that, the last one that we need to look at is to calculate the angle of departure and arrival. So we said that uh, in the rules that uh, the root locus always starts at a finite or, or infinite pole and ends at a zero. So what is the angle at which it departs and it creates it on the root locus? So that's the, the last part that we need to have a look at in this section. So here, the calculation of the angle of departure it is equal to, uh, the formula for calculating that one is equal to the sum of all angles, so let's start here, the sum of all angles from the poles and zeros is equal to 2k plus 1 into 180. This 2k plus 1, you will assume k is equal to 0 at all times. Now, the difference is that the angle created by the poles are always negative and the angle created by the zeros is always positive. So a bit of trigonometry also comes in when we are doing this problem. I'll show you an example when we are working on it. Now here is how this formula is written out. So you can see it is minus theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 minus theta 4 minus theta 5 plus theta 6. So here you can see that all the negative angles, if you can have a look here, uh, all the negative angles are your poles. So this is a pole, this is a pole, pole, and all the positive angles, those are your zeros. Okay? So here it is equal to 2k plus 1 equals 180. So for all else and purposes, you can assume that k is equal to, to 0. Right now, our aim is to find out what is theta 1. We will understand this better when we are doing a problem. But now, to calculate theta 1, you just take theta 1 to the left hand side and you bring the rest to the right hand side. And if you do the calculation, you'll get a value for theta 1. So, this is how we calculate the angle of departure. Now, let's try and see if we can do a problem based on this. So this is a solved example in your textbook that I am trying to do. You can try some more examples in the textbook to give you some more answers there. Now, this is the question. It's an open loop transfer function and we are supposed to find the angle of departure. So when you have a question of this nature, the first thing that we need to do is to draw the S-plane diagram or the S-plane representation for this figure, right? So whenever you're doing the S-plane, the most important thing is you need to determine the axes that you have. So here you will see that this is the 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 real axis, sigma, and this is the imaginary axis, j omega. So this is the origin. You have your positive axis and you have your negative axis here. Let's put it. And then over here on the JMA axis again, you have your positive axis here. And over here you have your negative axis. Right. Now we need to plot the open loop poles. So you can see that uh, the open loop poles, they are going to, let's write down the poles and zeros. So the poles, there is one at minus 3, that is s plus 3. And if you take the roots of s squared plus 2s plus 2, you will see that they lie at minus 1 plus or minus j. That's where they lie. And then you have a zero which lies at minus two. So you can see that that is the, the three things that we have there. So in total we have 
four components. The pole at minus 3 and then there is two poles. The first one is at minus 1 plus or minus j plus j and the second one is at minus 1 minus j. And then you have the 0 at minus 2. So let's try and plot them. So the pole at minus 3, I'm going to let's use a blue in there. That is the pole at minus 3. Then you have the pole at minus 1 plus j and then you have a pole at minus 1 minus j. And then you have a 0 at minus 2. Now, we need to find out what are the angles. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw the lines here. Right? So, assuming that the root locus of this system passes through this point, right? that is the assumption that we make. So, assuming that the root locus passes through this point, say that this is the, the root locus that we have here. Right? This is how the root locus looks like. Remember, we said that the root locus has to be symmetrical about the, the real axis. Then we can start calling our angles. So, our first angle is going to be theta 1. The second angle is going to be this one here, and that let's call it as theta 2. Then we have a third angle, which is, I'm just going to make it a bit more lighter here. This is going to be theta 3, I'm just going to call it, but before that I just want to draw the next one, which is this angle, which is theta 4. So, let's call this as, theta 3 and this angle here, let's call it as theta 4. Now, if you assume that we want to calculate theta 1, the formula that we created here, the formula that we have over here, we can write it again as follows. So it will be minus theta 1 uh, minus theta 2 because remember I'm taking the negative of the angle from the poles and the positive from the angle of the zeros plus theta 3 because theta 3 is an angle from a 0 and then minus theta 4 is equal to 180 degrees. I took it as directly 180 degrees because if you substitute for k equals 0 here, it becomes 2 into 0 plus 1, which is 1 into 180, which is 180 degrees. So from here, we need to calculate theta 1. So theta 1 is equal to minus theta 2 plus theta 3. Uh, okay, let's just do it like this. Yeah, minus theta one. Uh, if you let's let's just write it up on the side here. Let us say minus theta one is equal to one eighty degrees plus theta two minus theta three plus theta four. And if you take and positive on both sides, theta 1 is equal to minus 180 degrees minus theta 2 plus theta 3 minus theta 4. So this is how you will be calculating the angles. Now we need to find out what each of these angles is going to be. So theta 1 is something that you need to find out. But now if you have a look here, theta 2, that is 90 degrees because it is a right angle triangle is. So that is 90 degrees. Theta 2 is sorted. Now if you have a look at uh, theta 2 or theta 3, sorry. How do we calculate theta 3? Theta 3 is this angle here and you will see that theta 3 is a right angle triangle which has got a base of 1, right, and 
an opposite side of one. So if you use a tan formula, it will be tan inverse opposite by adjacent, which is 1 by 1. So that is theta 3. Then if you look at theta 4, again using the tangent formula, you'll get it as tan inverse opposite is 1 divided by adjacent is 2. So it's 1 divided by 2. So the formula now will be theta 1 is equal to minus 180 degrees minus theta 2 which is 90 degrees plus theta 3 which is tan inverse 1 <coughs> minus theta 4 which is tan inverse half and when you do this calculation you will see that theta 1 is equal to 108.4 degrees or if it is in a minus angle it will be 251.6 degrees so you can do this calculation and then you will see that being done there. Now you will see that uh, this section is indeed uh, solved in the, in the textbook, so you can have a look at that. This is how it's solved. You can see that they have indeed drawn on all the angles and they have indeed calculated it. So this is the way you need to also do that example. So this is something that you can indeed give a try. Now as an example that you can do for your own, uh, you need to try and see if you can do this problem here. It is a skill assessment uh, 8.4. Well, the question says that given a unity feedback system that has a forward transfer function, you can sketch the root locus, you can find the imaginary uh, axis crossing, find the gain k find the breaking point and find the angle of departure. So this is uh, a problem that you can give a try to see if you can understand, make better understanding of what we have done here. Right. Okay, so this brings us to the end of the third module. Now next class we will be starting with uh, module number four, which is on the frequency domain techniques.